Hi boys and girls, welcome to Everyday Math Lesson 5.5, Quadrangles. The materials that you'll need today, notebook paper, pencil, your math journal, home link 5.5. If you don't have this page today, that's okay. You can work out the problems on your whiteboard or in a notebook, and then your template. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is go over our math boxes from the previous lesson. So if you can open up your math journal to page 121, if you're noticing that you have any mistakes, please fix those with your pencil and eraser. So for question number one, fill in the missing numbers. So we started at 86 cents, and then minus 10, we would have 76, 66, 56, then 46, 36, and 26. And if you put the cent symbol behind, that would be great too. For question two, how many patients did Dr. Rio see on Tuesday? So the TU is an abbreviation for Tuesday, and I can see that he saw 10 patients on Tuesday. For question three, write five even numbers greater than 50, and there's lots of possible answers for this. So you didn't have to have the same that I had, but I chose to use 52, 58, 64, 90, and 98. For question four, you're solving. So we know that nine plus three equals 12, and then the turnaround fact, we have 3 plus 9 is also equal to 12. For question 5, draw the hands to show 645. So you can see my hour hand is in between the 6 and the 7, but it should be closer to the 7. And then my minute hand, my longer hand, is on the 9. And then a half hour earlier would be 615. For question 6, there's 35 butterflies. 10 flew away. How many butterflies are left? And so 35 minus 10 equals 25. So double check that to make sure you have this page correct before moving on to our next slide. For the next questions, please use either a notebook paper or a whiteboard and marker if available. If the speed is ever too fast, please pause as often as needed. So the first thing we're gonna do is review a little bit of the ballpark estimates. So you don't have to find the actual answer, we just want to find that nice, easy number that we can do in our head. So we're rounding these to the nearest 10. So let's do the first one together. 29, is that closer to 20 or 30? And you should have said 30. Is 46 closer to 40 or closer to 50? And since it is 6, we know that that would round up. So we should have 30 plus 50 equals 80. So let's try three more. So now for this next one, can you tell me the ballpark estimate for 17 plus 84? Press pause and then play to check. So 17, you should have said, would round to 20. 84, since it's a 4, we know that that's going to be closer to 80. So 20 plus 80 is equal to 100. Let's try another one. Can you round 67 plus 98? Press pause and play to check. So 67, we would know, would round to 70. 98 is going to round to 100. 70 plus 100 equals 170. We'll try one more. Can you round 76 to the nearest 10? And then will you also round 123 to the nearest 10? So you want to think, is this closer to 120 or closer to 130? Press pause and play to check. All right, so we know that 76 would round to 80, plus 123 is going to round to 120. 80 plus 120 would equal 200. We will work more on ballpark estimates in later lessons. So now you can put your whiteboard on your notebook to the side, and we're going to first talk about Math Journal page 115 before going into Home Link 5.5. So if you can open up your Math Journal, kind of going back to page 115. So we talked about this page in Lesson 5.3. We've already talked about parallel lines and not parallel. But today let's look at our quadrangles or our quadrilaterals. So again, these polygons are quadrangles or quadrilaterals. They all have four sides. Here's our sides. They all have four angles. So in the corner, what we're seeing are our angles. And then they also have four vertices. 
So vertices are kind of the points that those line segments are coming to. So notice how squares and rectangles, they're going to have a square corner. So look at how all four of these angles, I could fit a little square inside. Same thing with my square. They all would have a square angle. But if I look at my rhombus, these ones do not have a square angle. Some of them would be smaller than a square. Some of them would be bigger. Some of the angles would be bigger than a square. Same thing with my trapezoid. I don't have all the same type of angle. And same thing with my kite and parallelogram. Notice how sometimes, too, with my shapes, like a square and a rhombus, all four of my sides are the same length. But that doesn't always happen. Like in a rectangle, two of the sides are the same length. And then the opposite. And then I have another two that are the same length. Same with the parallelogram, with our kite, and with the trapezoid, depending on what that looks like, sometimes I'm going to have just two sides that would be the same length, and then sometimes it's going to be a little bit different like this one. So now let's use what we know about quadrangles, and let's take a look at that 5.11 or 5.5 .5 home length that looks like this. So for numbers one and two, let's talk about those ones together. And then the bottom part, I'll have you practice on your own. But we'll look at numbers one and two first. So look at the number of square corners and which quadrangle is different from the other three. So look at my amount, look at my angles. Which one seems to be different than the other three? And you should have said square because notice how the square has those square corners where the other three, the trapezoid, the rhombus, and the um, wide rhombus, they do not have square angles. And then let's look at number two. So this time we're looking at the length of the sides. So look at the size of the sides. Which quadrangle is different from the other three? And this time you should have said rectangle. Notice how the rhombus and the square, all four sides are the same length, but the rectangle, only two sides are the same length, and then the opposites, two sides are also the same length. Second graders, for the bottom practice, I'm going to ask that you solve each of these problems on your own and then press um, play when you're ready to check. Press pause now. All right, let's see how you did. So 6 plus 3 we know is 9. And then I'll go over to number 4 here. 5 plus 9 we know is 14. 6 minus 3 is 3. 8 minus 5 is also 3. If I have 24 minus 4, I know that that would equal 20. If I have 56 minus 50, I would have 6 left. For number 9, 35 plus 62. So I know that 30 plus 60 equals 90. And I know that 5 plus 2 equals 7. So 90 plus 7 would give me a total of 97. For the last one, number 10, 25 plus 66, for this one I decided to stack them on, work the problem out on the side. So I'm going to first add my 1. So I know that 5 plus 6 is 11. So I need to borrow, I'm going to, or I'm going to carry, I'm going to put my 1 up top. And so now I can put, so I have my 1 up top and my other one below for 11. And then 6 plus 2 is 8 plus one more is nine, giving me my total of 91. So double check to make sure that you have your practice correct and fix any mistakes with your pencil and eraser. The last thing that we'll do today is take a look at our math boxes, which is page 122. If you're noticing that, or once you're all done, if you can take a picture and add the picture to see stuff for your classroom teacher, and we will go over this page in our next video. For question one, how many cubes? and then once you figure out how many, cross out 13 of those cubes and tell me how many are left, and then give a number model. 
fill in the missing numbers for number two. Use your ruler and draw a line segment and then label it MS. And then you're going to tell me how long that line segment is. So I can do this one with you today. So if I draw a line, and I'm going to start at my zero and looks like I'm going to make it three centimeters long. And then I need to label it. So I'm going to grab my letters clip. And I would label one side M. And I would label the other side S. Okay. And then also my line segment, if you want to put a little dot above or on the ends of each of those to show where you would mark them. And then write how long your line segment is. For question number four, a triangle has how many sides? A rhombus has how many sides? A trapezoid and a hexagon, how many sides? You can use your template to double check. For question five, how many dots are in this four by six array? And you can count by fours if you like. And then for question six, write three numbers that add up to 20. So there's more than one answer, but I want you to think, how can you get to 20? What three numbers could you add up? All right, I will see you next time.